Hey folks, uh, so I get a lot of questions uh, when it comes to having to log into servers using a terminal. So it's not something you have to do too often, but occasionally if you're following along with the tutorial or you're trying to install a piece of software or something like that, they might say, well, you just run these commands. Uh, it might be to use git. Uh, or something else on the server. Uh, and actually, if you start to become more proficient in how to create directories and move around in them, uh, you might end up liking Terminal. Maybe not, uh, but occasionally you're gonna have to get in there uh, and use that. And one of the things that can make that a lot easier is something called SSH keys. And so I wanted to create this video to talk a little bit about not only how you log into a server, but how you set up these keys to make that easier for you. Uh, and so uh, this is how to do that. So first off, let's see what a normal shell login looks like. So uh, this is on a Mac, and so you'd see a window similar to this if you were to open up Terminal. You can get to Terminal by going to Go Utilities uh, in the Finder. And then under the Utilities menu, you'll find the Terminal application. When you open it up, it opens up to your user folder on the computer. Uh, I know that because of that tilde icon over here to the left. So the way that this works is on the left, it tells me where I am on the computer. And so it's got the name of my computer and then the name of the folder that I'm sitting in. I'm sitting in my user folder. Uh, and so if I type in here, SSH, keys recl at keys.reclaimhost, uh, that's how I'm going to access it. Now, what does that mean? So obviously SSH means we're gonna log in using a secure shell, and then I'm gonna use the username for my account at the domain for my account. So you probably got a username and a password when you signed up for Reclaim Hosting. And so that username is gonna be the first part, usually the first eight characters of your domain, and then at your full domain in there. So I've got an account here at keys.reclaim.host, just a little test account that we're going to use in here. And when you first type that in, it's going to ask you if you can save that information to your computer. Since this is the first time I've connected, I say yes, go ahead and uh, save that URL and the IP address associated with it. And then it prompts me for a password. And so that would be the password that I got by email. You type in the password, and we get logged into the server. I know now that I'm logged into the server because if I look to the left there, it says keys recl at keys.reclaim.host. We're no longer on my computer. This shell prompt is on the server itself and it's in the user folder for that server. And so that's how you would get logged into shell. Now I could go in here and I could look at what folders and files were in here, but you know, more so for this tutorial, I want to show you how we can make that a little easier using SSH keys so that you don't necessarily have to put your password in every single time. And so what is an SSH key? Well, maybe you might have gotten something like a, a, a safety deposit box from a bank you know, at some point, you know, and if you haven't, this is a picture of one. And the way a safety deposit box in a bank works is that there are two keys that you use to unlock it. And one key, the bank holds on to. And the other key, they give to you when you sign up to get a box from them. And so if I go and I visit the bank, I bring my key with me. And I say, I want to you know, get into box 217. My name's Tim Owens. They might look at my driver's license. And they say, you have your key with you? And I say, yes. And so then they pull out a file, and they get their key for that same box. It's very unique to that specific box. We both put our keys in. We turn them. And then the box unlocks. If you only have one of those keys, you can't get into that box. And so that's sort of a security measure to make sure that if I put stuff in this box, I don't necessarily want that bank to be able to access my stuff at any time. And vice versa, uh, the bank knows that if I don't have a key, I shouldn't have access to that stuff. And so it's a security measure in place that both keys have to be in there. That's, a, I think, a pretty decent analogy for what SSH keys are. We're going to generate a pair of keys. One is going to be called a public key, and that's sort of like the one that you're giving to the bank. In this case, we're going to put that on the server itself. 
And then the other key is a private key, and that's something that I'm going to put on my computer. I'm going to back it up, I'm going to keep it safe, that's going to be the same as if I was holding on to my password for my account. And as long as those two things connect and match up, then it's going to let me onto the server, and it's going to know who I am, and it's not going to prompt me for a password anymore because it's going to go, oh, you're allowed to be in here. And so that's all I need to get in. So uh, let's take a little bit of a look and see what that actually looks like, uh, generating it and putting it on our computer and then logging in. So I've logged into cPanel in here, and so if I scroll down, cPanel actually allows me to manage the SSH keys that are applied to my account. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the security section and you'll see SSH access. If I click on that, it takes me to this screen where I can manage my SSH keys. And so I'm going to go ahead and click to manage them. I don't have any in this account yet, but we're going to go ahead and create one in here. So, uh, so you'll see at the moment there are no public keys and no private keys on the server. And so we need to generate a new one. Uh, if I already had one, let's say I was moving from a different host and I had done this before, I could actually import a key as well. You'll see that button there. Uh, but we just want to create a new one from scratch and use it on this computer. So I'm going to go here to generate a new key. So the first thing that we have to do is give the key a name. And you'll see they put a default in there, ID underscore DSA. Uh, I like to use RSA. So I'm going to use ID underscore RSA. You'll see at the top it talks about RSA versus DSA. Um, it's a different type of encryption, um, and there's benefits to either. And so you can choose either one in here. I like to use ID RSA. So the name of it we'll just put in there. And then we have to give our key a password. And this is something, this doesn't have to be the password for your account. In fact, it shouldn't be. It should be something that you'll remember. It's going to be tied to that key. So I'm going to type a password in here. And then down under key type, we'll make that RSA, because that's the one that I chose. And the key size will keep default at 1024. So let's go ahead and generate that key. And so now that that's done, you'll see that a few things happen. It generated the key, it saved it on the server, and it saved both the private and the public key. Now the private key doesn't necessarily have to be on the server, um, but I'm going to have to get that, so I'm going to download it from the server and put it on my computer. The public key is going to live on the server, and that's what it'll use to match up. And so it talks a little bit about the encryption here, the fingerprint, and random art. Uh, this just says this is a unique key that it generated for me. So I'm going to go back here. So now in my SSH access area, you'll see that I've got a key under public keys and private keys, and I can download those. And I can also authorize them, right? So by default, we created one, but you'll notice this public key, it's not authorized to access the server. By default, just by creating the key, it still doesn't necessarily have access to unlock my account. And so the first thing I'm going to do in here is say manage, and I'm going to give that public key access to my account. So we'll click Authorize. And so now that public key that I generated is authorized to access my computer. So now I want to download the private key for it. So I'm going to go ahead and click View slash Download. And you'll notice this is what a key looks like. Looks kind of crazy, right? So uh, this is an encrypted uh, string of text in here and so I can download this key to my computer and I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so this is literally a file on my computer. It's in the downloads area right now. We need to move it to an area on our computer. Now on the server, you may have noticed previously, it was putting it on a server in a .ssh folder. And that's similar on a Mac. We're going to need to have a .ssh folder on our computer. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and open up Terminal, because I just think that's going to be the easiest way to do this. Um, and so we've got our Terminal window open again. Again, we're on our, my computer in the user folder. And so if I do a ls, which of course it, you follow some of my other tutorials, means we want to list the folders in my account. 
uh, you'll notice uh, I don't have an s.ssh folder. Well, I actually do. Uh, there's a thing with the ls command that you need to do, and it's dash la. And that means list all of the files and folders in there. So any folder uh, or file that has a dot a period at the beginning of the name is a hidden file on the computer. And so if I do that, oh, I suddenly have a whole lot of information in here. And actually, if I scroll up, you'll notice .ssh is a folder on that computer. And so if you don't have that .ssh folder, you need to make it. And the way you would do that is just mkdir, make directory, and then type .ssh. Uh, you want this to be in your user folder, so make sure that tilde is there to show you that you're in your main user folder for your computer. You make that .ssh folder, uh, and that way it'll be there. But I already have it, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And what I need to do is I need to copy the file that I downloaded earlier. So the easy way to do that, there's a command, it's cp for copy. And then I'll put a space, and I'm copying from my downloads folder. And the name of the file is id underscore rsa. And then there's a space, and I need to say where I want to copy that file to. And so I'm going to copy it into the .ssh folder. So I put .ssh slash, and that just means put it inside of that .ssh folder. And then the last thing that I need to do is to make sure that that SSH key doesn't have permissions for other users to write to it, um, but that the computer does have access to read the key. And so the way you do that is with chmod. That terminal command means make a change, make a modification to that file, and we're going to change the permissions on it. Uh, and so we put chmod, a space, and then the permissions that you want are 600. Now, what does 600 mean? Well, 600 basically means that certain users have permission to read and access it, but not to write to it. Um, that me as the owner, I could make changes to it, but that other users on there couldn't. However, that the computer could read that file in order to access it and use it. So I'm going to chmod 600, and then I'm going to say .ssh slash id underscore rsa. So I'm telling it what file I want to change the permissions on. Now, believe it or not, that's all we have to do in order to have this set up. So I'm going to type clear and hit enter just to get a nice clean screen here. And I'm going to type that same command that I typed earlier, where it was asking me for a password to get in and that kind of thing. So ssh keys recl at keys.reclaim.host. Let's see what happens this time. Are you sure you want to connect? Well, this is a different window, isn't it? Now it's asking me for the password for my key. And so I'm going to type that in. And I could actually choose on my computer to remember it if I kind of didn't want to have to type it in every single time, or I could choose that I do need to put that in. But I'll type OK. And now I'm logged into the computer. So now it's using an SSH key to log in, as opposed to that password that cPanel had automatically generated for me and emailed to me. Let's exit out of here. And let's just try to enter it again. Didn't have to put in a password because I saved it in my keychain, so it's automatically logging me in at this point. So now I have an easy way to access the computer using that SSH key. I've got the private one on my computer, I've got the public one on the server, and I can access it. And what's great about that now is if I ever wanted to download that public key off of the server, I'd just go back into cPanel and do that, and I could put that on another server. If I moved hosts at some point in the future, I can take those keys with me and access anything. Uh, so a good example of this is GitHub will allow you to set up SSH keys to have permission to write to repositories in GitHub. Uh, another example is some virtual private server uh, accounts, like uh, DigitalOcean is a good example of that. When you set up a server with them, they allow you to set up SSH keys that you can use to access that server, and so they'll allow you to import that same key. So it's always 
a good idea to have an SSH key on you. You only need one. Uh, you could have you could have different ones for multiple places, or you could hold on to that one uh, and use that in multiple places. It's entirely up to you and how security focused you want to be. Uh, but that's how it works now. So now if I need to access the server, I can just type in the command to access it, and it's going to look on my computer and know that I have access to it because the key, the private key that's on my computer matches up with the public key on the server. And that's that's how SSH keys work. If you find yourself accessing the server often by terminal to do various commands, I think you'll find using SSH keys will be a lot easier for you. So thanks for watching.